Welcome back. Former President Obama drawing a red line in 2012 when it came to Syrian chemical weapons. But now President Trump is the one taking decisive action. There would be enormous consequences if we start seeing movement on the chemical weapons front. The purpose of our actions is to establish a strong deterrent against the production spread and use of chemical weapons. That's a red line for us. The United States will be a partner and a friend, but the fate of the region lies in the hands of its own people. So why are some critics now saying it is not strong enough? Here to weigh in, Corey Lewandowski, chief strategist for America First Action and former Trump campaign manager. Corey, thanks for joining us this morning. You're used to this. Just as you appear on the screen, we've got a brand new uh, tweet from the commander in chief. We want to we want to share with our audience, get your response to president tweeting this just moments ago. A perfectly executed strike last night. Thank you to France and the United Kingdom for their wisdom and the power of their fine military. Could not have had a better result. Mission accomplished. So the president satisfied with the military action last night. Are you? Well, you know, Pete, I think the American people wake up today and people around the world wake up and thank the United States, Great Britain and France for standing up to a brutal dictator who is killing his own people. Uh, with chemical weapons, and they are thankful that the American people and this president is not the previous administration. We have now seen, on two separate occasions, the United States is responding when a brutal dictator decides to kill his own people. There are repercussions, and what we've seen is we are the greatest military in the world. The precision which with which with we acted last night and early this morning shows exactly why we are the greatest superpower in the earth. And that t partnering with the United States and France was a very important process for us to demonstrate to the world we are in this together. Well, not everyone agrees with you, Corey. One uh, TV host, Rachel Maddow, saying last night, if you have a chaotic White House, then you can't actually have a proper national security strategy. Here's a little bit of what she had to say last night. There are national security consequences to having a presidency that is as chaotic as Mr. Trump's presidency, even if the tail is not wagging the dog, even if you give the president every benefit of the doubt, what else is going on in the president's life right now unavoidably creates a real perception around the globe that that may have been part of the motivation. Even if the dog isn't wagging the tail, Corey. You know, it's amazing because you saw, uh, you know, our secretary of defense joining with the other secretaries from around the world to talk about the military strike. This was well thought out. It was well planned. It was perfectly executed. This is not something that was done on a whim. This is not something that was done in reaction uh, overnight. This is something that was planned and executed. Our military was there. They knew exactly what the targets were. This was a limited strike scope. And look, the, the liberals can discuss this all they want. The reason we're in this situation with Assad is because Barack Obama drew a line in the sand, which meant nothing. There were no teeth behind it. The chemical weapons, which were supposed to be a red line in the previous administration, meant nothing. And we're here today, and people lost their lives in Syria because the previous administration did nothing to prevent it from happening. Corey, let me ask you. So President uh, Vladimir Putin responding today, of course, attacking the United States for their action. Uh, the stakes raised here. What is the message to Russia, and was it sent loud enough? Well, the message to both Russia and Iran is very clear. If you continue to support a brutal dictator in Assad, there will be consequences with Assad. You can't have it. And the, the president last night in his address raised a very important question to those nations. Do you want to be nations that support the killing of innocent men, women, and children? And it doesn't matter who you are. Nobody can support that. We cannot have genocide. And I think those nations have to look deep within themselves to say, do we want to continue to have a relationship with Assad? And if so, what are the consequences for us? And this mm -hmm. president was very, very clear last night. His statement about uh, that was clear to Russia and to Iran. We will not tolerate this moving forward. Corey, in about two and a half hours, about a mile from here at 11 o'clock at the United Nations, uh, Russia is calling an emergency Security Council meeting about these strikes, uh, where, where if we do something, they'll veto it. We would, of course, veto any action by them. Is the U.N., the international community, even a viable player? I mean, the president's been a critic of that body for a long time. Or is this ultimately the, the reality that if America doesn't lead, nothing gets done? I, I, look, I, I love the work that uh, Ambassador Nikki Haley has been doing at the United Nations. She has made us tough again. She's made us strong again inside that organization. 
But let's be clear, if it is not for the United States partnering with Great Britain and France last night, we don't know if there'd be another chemical attack. We don't know if there is going to be another chemical attack in Syria. But what we do know is that Bashar al-Assad is going to have consequences if he continues to kill his own people, innocent men, women, and children. That cannot be acceptable, regardless of what the UN's position is. I know, I know that Russia has a seat on the Security Council. Vetoing any position that the UN puts forward is not going to stop us from preventing a brutal dictator from killing his own people. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, we'll leave it there. Corey Lewandowski, always good to see you. Thanks, Corey. Thanks, Thanks Corey. for being with us. Thank you.